Hi there, and thanks for joining in as we get a good clear picture of the supplements that are taken to increase levels of NAD. NMN, NR, nicotinic acid, and nicotinamide are all precursors of one of the most important molecules in the body called NAD. And today, we're going to give you a really good clear picture of how each of those molecules is related to each other, which one or ones have the best evidence for health benefits, and at what dose. Ultimately, what we want in our cells is NAD, also known as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's a critical coenzyme found in every one of your cells in the body, and it's involved in hundreds of metabolic processes such as cellular energy and mitochondrial health. But we cannot supplement with NAD for a number of reasons, including the fact that NAD is degraded in the GIT before being absorbed. And given the importance of NAD, combined with the fact that tissue levels of NAD decreases on average with age, it'd be theoretically really beneficial if we had some type of NAD increasing supplement. So how do we go about supplementing to get optimal amounts of NAD in our cells? We do it with a number of different precursors of NAD. So different forms of vitamin B3 or vitamin B3 derivatives, and I'll go through each of the four main ones right now. Nicotinic acid, abbreviated as NA, has been around as a supplement for over 80 years. This is the one that they use in mega doses of one to four grams per day for improving lipid levels, and it also results in flushing of the skin. But NA supplementation actually increases insulin resistance. So it doesn't appear to be the ideal supplement. NR or nicotinic riboside is another precursor of NAD and it's been the subject of a number of human studies recently, but unfortunately the results are not as encouraging as with other vitamin B3 derivatives. Niacinamide, also known as nicotinamide or simply NAM, is another precursor of NAD and supplementation has been shown to significantly increase NAD levels, improve skin wrinkles and elasticity, improve recovery time in COVID patients, improve muscle strength, help grow new mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of the cells, and resulted in reduced rates in new non-melanoma skin cancers. So I'll come back to that one in just a minute. And finally, NMN or nicotinamide mononucleotide is quite a new supplement. The human trials of NMN only started in 2022, but they seem to be promising as doses as low as 100 to 125 milligrams per day have shown to have significant benefits. Different studies have found increased aerobic capacities in humans, improved sleep quality, improvements in muscle insulin sensitivity, improved walking distance, walking speed, and grip strength, decreased arterial stiffness, and improvements in lipids. So that's another one that we'll get back to in just a minute. And just to finish off our understanding of the various names of molecules that can be used to form NAD, the terms vitamin B3, also known as niacin, are synonymous, and they are used to denote nicotinic acid or nicotinamide. Importantly, regardless of which one of these precursors is chosen as a supplement, the body is going to need to manipulate the molecule to get it to a molecular form that's involved as an important enzymatic cofactor. And in order to do this, the body uses different pathways, including a recycling pathway, which recycles about 8 grams of used NAD per day. And research has shown that the best way to make sure that those pathways optimally recycle NAD is to engage in regular exercise. In fact, although overall, while human tissue stores of NAD decreases with age, NAD does not decrease in tissues of older adults who exercise regularly. At this point, there's a lot of information that's missing that could help us make a definitive choice on which one of the vitamin B3s or their derivatives has the greatest health benefits and the exact dose that would be best. The supplement world has made a lot of mistakes in the past, for instance, by betting on the one type of antioxidant supplement that showed the greatest antioxidant potential. So I would suggest that we learn from those past mistakes and not mega dose on just one of the four supplements, but rather if you do decide to supplement with one of the vitamin B3 derivatives, include both nicotinamide and NMN in a dose of 50 milligrams each per day. 
To be clear, this is an educated hypothesis because there is just not enough research at this point to say for sure. But both of those supplements have proven advantages, and the idea of supplementing with the two is to get the benefits of both without overloading one of the pathways that make or rejuvenate NAD. If the current ban on NMN extends beyond November of 2023, NMN will not be available as a supplement at all, and at that point I'd replace the NMN with nicotinic acid. The population that would be likely to benefit from that or any of the NAD precursors includes older individuals, individuals who have a diet that is low in vitamin B3 rich foods like fish, poultry, red meats, nuts, and seeds, and individuals over the age of 40 who do not engage in regular exercise. But having said that, research shows that the exercise is the most important factor in increasing NAD levels. Make sure you avoid supplements if possible during pregnancy and always consult your healthcare practitioner before starting any supplementation. The other thing to remember is that supplements in some countries like USA are not regulated. And for instance, only about one half of the companies that sell NMN actually have any of the NMN in their products. So make sure that you purchase your supplements from a reliable company that uses a third party to test their products for quality and purity. Hopefully that cleared up your questions about the NAD precursor supplements. If you have any further questions, post them in the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next video.